So imagine you had a bag of programmable matter, by which I mean engineered modules that cooperate with each other to form shapes. You could reach into the bag and pull out some object you needed, like a wrench or a coffee cup, and then when you're done with it, you could put it back into the bag and it would break apart and its modules would be available to form the next object that you needed. So biology provides the inspiration that this is, in fact, possible. This is a simulation by my colleague Jonathan Backrack showing a mechanical protein folding itself into several objects. This is a chain of engineered modules, and each module has a motor that can exert a force on its joint. By setting the angle at each joint, it's possible to fold the representation of any shape. Although in practice, I think you would want to have lots of these chains working together, just like biology does it. We had a grant from DARPA to build a prototype of this, and the grant had a requirement that the module be smaller than one cubic centimeter. Uh, and because we wanted to make a lot of these modules, we wanted the modules to be cheap and simple. And so we decided to not use gearing, just to have the motors directly drive each axis. We looked, but we couldn't find any off-the-shelf motors that were small enough and could exert enough continuous force without burning themselves out. So we invented a new type of motor, which we call an electropermanent motor. This motor works by using coils to remagnetize its permanent magnets all the way around their hysteresis loops on every step. What this means is, when you remove power, the device holds its position, and it can exert its maximum force with very low average power input. Once we had the motor working, we designed the rest of the mechanical protein. It's basically a chain of motor rotors and stators, the rotating part and the stationary parts, interlocked together with a flexible circuit wrapped around it for power and control. We had to learn watchmaking techniques to build the prototypes, which was fun. So here is a video probably taken at about 2 a.m., of the first module turning in a pair of scissors on my desk. You'll see the coiled portion of the flexible circuit coiling and uncoiling to connect the module to its neighbor. It took us a while to get that right. And then once we had one module working, we made four more. So here's a chain forming shapes. It starts out as a line, and then it forms a left-handed helix, a right-handed helix, a periscope, and an L-shape. Every module gets its instructions to turn left, right, or straight. That's like the DNA code for the shape. And then the motors fold the chain up into the shape. The motors are strong enough to lift one other segment, which is OK, it works. But to have performance on par with geared systems, uh, we'd like to be able to lift two to three other modules, which we think we can get to with a lighter structure and with better materials. Uh, still, uh, as far as we know, this is the highest resolution chain type programmable matter system built to date. We started this project with a vision of programmable matter, but we ended up inventing a motor that can hold its position without power. We're still working on programmable matter, of course, but uh, working with our industrial partners, we've discovered that there are a lot of applications uh, for such a small, low-power motor in aerospace and medical applications, and so we're working with them now to push this technology out into the world.